Hi everyone, my name is Mark Kwok and we're talking about my favorite things. So I'll try to keep this video short, but today I wanna to talk a little bit about the plant behind me right there, as well as one other plant and why owning a big ginormous plant is a game changer for your life. But this is the Birds of Paradise and it is the ultra large size. I mean, it almost goes up to my ceiling here. I also wanna talk about the other huge plant I have in my place, and that is the Fiddle Leaf Fig, super popular, dare I say basic plant, but one of my favorites as well. So just quickly going into it, I think there is a huge benefit to owning a giant plant. Now, if this is only if your space permits, obviously, but if you have even a little space, I do recommend getting a nice large plant. So reason number one why I think it's really beneficial to have a big plant is that it just livens up a specific place. It is a pleasure to have this giant plant there reminding you of life and of aesthetics and of just so many good things. I mean, it really does make a difference. Like I come in the morning, I wake up and then I come out to the living room and I see the big plant and your mood, even if it's subtle, your mood actually changes. Second, I think aesthetics wise, Plants almost go with anything. I don't know, we're just accustomed to plants matching with any sort of furniture, any sort of design. So if you have, uh, if you wanna spruce up the design of your interior and you just wanna make it look better, a lot of people are thinking about, okay, what kind of furniture do I put? What kind of shelves do I put up? What kind of uh, regular things do I put up? Just put a plant there. Third is that you get to take care of something. And now I know some people will look at it as, as, as kind of a con, like, oh, I have to now take care of this plant and it's a big one, so it's more maintenance. Truth is, I, you know, a big plant or small plant, not a huge difference in maintenance. It's just water, sunlight. I mean, those are the two things, really. I've had this plant behind me for two plus years. It's been a champ and all I do is water it once a week and there's really not much else I do. I mean, it's a plant, what, what else would you do? But the fact is that it's almost therapeutic to water it and give it some life and be the actual participant that allows it to live. Like I think that that's a thing. And last is that it, it does have some real benefits of, of cleaning the air in your room apparently. Like I've heard of stories where people have allergies and they put a big plant in their, in their room and all of a sudden those allergies are gone. I, I don't know how much credit I can give towards stories like that to be honest. But if you can get some oxygen out of it and clean your air, I mean, why not? Let's make that a pro as well. Now the two plants I wanna talk about that I would recommend highly are the fiddle leaf fig and the birds of paradise. So the one behind me is the birds of paradise. I had been wanting this plant for so long. Finally, when we moved to this space, I, I got it and it has been my um, like absurd pleasure. It has sprouted considerably as well in that time period. These plants are great for the indoors and they're very popular. And I think I would highly recommend that as, a, as an amazing extra aesthetic part to your room. The second one is the Fiddle Leaf Fig. And the Fiddle Leaf Fig is super popular, especially in the Bay Area. It's actually in catalogs all over the place. The water element is the same for both plants. Once every week, once every two weeks, and they're just fine and they continue to grow. Every now and again, you'll have a leaf that falls off, but there's new leaves that grow and you just have had no issues so far in taking care of them. I do wanna have a quick shout out to another really popular plant that people love and that's the Monstera. Uh, the Monstera is super easy as well. It doesn't even require that much sunlight. And so you can put it in darker spots and they grow amazingly. Now, I, I will say they require a bit of pruning and, and, and trimming and stuff because it can get pretty unwieldy, but super easy doesn't need that much sunlight, very beautiful, and you can actually repopulate them very easily too. So you can take a couple of the leaves and the, and the stems from them and then just put them into a different pot and boom, you have another Monstera plant. And you can start gifting them because it just populates so easily and so fast. Now one thing I wanna quickly warn is that there are two cons with owning these sort of plants. But the first con is that they are generally really expensive if you're buying them big to begin with. The price on probably of, of something like this is gonna be close to like 200 bucks. or that's And that's a lot of money to spend for a plant and one that may even die if you don't take care of it well, right? I will say totally worth the money. Like even if it was $300, I'd say it's worth the money. It is absolutely a pleasure to own this thing and it's an everyday thing. 
The second thing is gonna be flies now and gnats. That's gonna be the thing. Now, thankfully the big plants I have have not had this issue, but if you are familiar with indoor plants, sometimes a fly or gnat will get in them and start to just multiply. Outside of that though, highly recommended. Get yourself a big plant. These are two recommendations. Also a third recommendation, I like the Monstera. I highly, highly suggest it for your mental health, your aesthetics, your design, just to feel better every day about having this kind of life in your room. Get yourself a big statement plant, Birds of Paradise or, or Fiddle Leaf Fig or anything else, right? Snake plant, there's plenty of good options. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Mark Kwok. I'll see you guys on the next one.